Hello guys, S2W here with your next casual consumer's perspective review. For today's in-depth look, we'll be looking at another sneaker retroed by Adidas at the end of 2018. Deciding it was finally time that they should bring back the first colorway that started off a huge wave of modern Adidas fanatics, today I have the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0 2018 OG here for review. At the beginning of 2015, Adidas had claimed that they created the best sneaker they'd ever made. Combining two of the most advanced technologies that they have, a revolutionary performance runner was born with not only modernistic styles, but unique comfort as well. Since its debut, and now three years in, it has undergone as many as four evolutionary changes to its construction. Mostly visual alterations of its upper, but the fit and overall comfort also changed over the course of the releases. However, one thing the original Ultra Boost enthusiasts and newcomers who saw the first variant missed was the OG upper pattern of the shoe. Those like me who missed out on the initial wave have missed out on probably the best knit pattern found amongst all the iterations. Now in December 2018, Adidas has decided to re-release a batch of iconic colorways and iterations from the past, with two models that include the 1.0 pattern again. One of them was the 1.0 cream re-release that I've already done a review on in my last video. And now we have the other one and it's the color that started it all. Let's take a closer look at these sneakers. Now looking at these in hand, I'm pretty sure people are not only mesmerized by its significance, but also its minimal color tones. Rocking a core black upper fused with grey weaving at the midfoot and forefront, we can finally catch a glimpse again of the iconic arrowhead design of the original 1.0 upper pattern. This upper is made out of prime knit, which was and still is their top tier knit technology that offers a soft, lightweight, adaptable, and stretchy textile that conforms to the shape of our feet as we wear them. Because it is a 1.0 upper, the textile follows suit and stays true to the elasticity of the 1.0, which is stretchy to a certain degree, but not as stretchy as the upgraded prime knit construction found on the 3.0 or 4.0 models. However, one thing we do continue to see is the internal toe guard found around the toe box, providing the structural shape and toe support for our feet. Originally intended for performance and running, several supportive features were built around this shoe, including the staple three-striped cage found to side profiles. On this OG pair, it's made out of plastic just like most general release Ultra Boost models, while painted in black. Whereas at the back of the shoes, we will see another iconic support piece and that is the TPU heel frame. This heel counter is made out of plastic as well, donning a striking purple color base that reignites the original OG flair that made this colorway memorable. On its surface, we will see the Ultra Boost branding debossed on it, with the word Ultra painted in black while the word Boost is reflective gold. Speaking of the plastic cage, it's also where the lace openings are provided for the flat black laces to thread through, tightening the cage while we're tightening the laces. And sticking true to its origins, the lace tips of this shoe is dipped in a gold color finish seen exactly from the first 2015 release. Now the whole shoe isn't fully prime knit like the other recent Ultra Boost iterations, and in fact, the ankle collar, back of the sneakers, and also the tongue of the shoe is all made out of mesh, which was a staple design of the 1.0. This forces the sneaker to become tighter and form-fitting around the foot entry, delivering a firm, secure, and stable fit that you would normally want on a running shoe. But since that, time has changed and it has slowly become one of the more casual shoe. And I guess Adidas saw this happening and eventually changed this on the 3.0 and 4.0 models by becoming more relaxed and loose on feet. So this mesh tooling is brought back on this retro, making it seem and feel as similar as the 2015 OG model. Then found at the midsole is their other most advanced technology, the cushioning system called Boost. Known for its ultra-responsive properties that would return energy, its comfort was and still is phenomenal, much like walking on fluffy pillows. This comfort forever changed the way comfort was defined on a sneaker, and many people even outside of the sneaker world has since claimed it as one of the most comfortable shoe ever. It's nothing much visual-wise as it does resemble styrofoam in my opinion, but once on feet, it was one of the bounciest yet stable sneaker to wear for an everyday casual setting. Not only does it look modernistic, but it doesn't seem too performance looking which makes it a well-balanced choice to wear. Taking a look inside the shoes, we will see the same removable insoles that come with the sneakers. However, on this retro, the insoles are decorated with a puffy bolded boost typography, which was introduced recently on the newer Ultra Boost model, while the OGs had a slim Ultra Boost branding instead. Then under the insole, we'll see the same rectangular designs for targeted support, while around the internal heel wall lining is the same padded surface on every Ultra Boost designed for extra comfort and heel embrace. Flipping over the sneakers, we'll see the upgraded Continental outsole on this OG 1.0 retro, 
whereas the 2015 OG had the spherical knob also instead, which they've scrapped due to it bottoming out too quickly. Again, the rubber is flexible so it can match the arch of our strides, while also providing some of the best traction in both wet and dry conditions. Of course, we cannot miss the stabilizing torsion system under here, making sure the sneaker can endure twists and turns without actually twisting and turning. Anyways, here are some Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0 2018 OG fit footage. Sizing wise, I went up half a size as I've always known the 1.0 were snug. I have wide feet for reference, but it's definitely the better choice for me personally, as the ankle collar and midfoot area are just generally tighter here. And because the forefront of the shoe angle upward more sharply, a little bit of toe room for sure added some leeway for me to feel comfortable. Plus, I honestly use Ultra Boost more as a casual shoe than performance, so something a bit more relaxing is always favorable in my situation. If you have narrow feet, you may stick with your true size, but I would suggest doing more research on that as the end of the day, everyone's foot shape and preference is different. Comfort wise, if you can get past that tighter fit, the Boost cushioning practically feels the same through every evolution. At this point, most people watching have tried or own a pair already, but if not, like what I've said in many of my reviews, the Ultra Boost sole is probably one of the few Adidas sneakers that is great if you actually want to feel the Boost material. It's bouncy, it's soft, but over time they do lose its bounce consistency I feel, but overall, it still brings one of the most unique experience cushioning wise. Since the upper is made out of knit, perforation is also great on this model and will keep our feet cool. Probably not a good choice to wear in cold, snowy conditions, but great otherwise. In terms of pricing sadly in Canada, it seems like the GR Ultra Boost has once again raised its price and this time by 10 bucks, making it 250 Canadian dollars before tax. When these first launched in 2015, they were only 180 at retail, even hearing it going on sale at certain locations in Toronto when the boost wave hasn't even started yet. Only last year in 2017 or so, Canada have changed it to 240 Canadian retail and now in 2018 it's 250. To be honest, having these OG and the 2018 creams retro in hand, I'm pretty finished with the silhouette unless some amazing collabs are created. I don't think it's a secret that people know Boost has lost its momentum in 2018 and with these retro, I thought it was a smart move by Adidas to recapture that so called hype and most importantly, allow us fans who missed out on the initial release a new opportunity to recapture one of the few better colorways of the past. But even so, I really hope Adidas can bring forth a new model <coughs> 4D, <coughs> into a more affordable price somehow, or maybe even a completely new and contemporary boosted silhouette to keep their product line strong. There were rumors of the Ultra Boost 5.0 releasing soon, but I'm not fond of the current leaked images that I've seen, so hopefully, better colorways, collabs, or maybe even design is still open for the future. As always, throw me some likes if you liked this video, and let me know in the comments if you decided to cop a pair of these OG 1.0 retro as well. Again, it doesn't seem like Canada or Toronto had a lot of stock just like the 2018 Cream Re release. And even as I've uploaded this review, our local boutiques still have yet to receive shipments of them as I cop this online at Adidas Canada. Hopefully, those who wanted it are able to get one as we can never tell if these are the last 1.0 retro we'll ever see. That's it for today, S2W signing off.